about them, a lot of them are on somebody's payroll. And this channel here is, is only fan funded, all right? The people who are part of the community pay for this to happen. So at this point, we just need an unbiased, or I suppose not unbiased, but biased in favor of the community style product review specifically of Hour of Devastation. That's what I'm picking. This isn't just a review of all booster boxes, although we are going to talk about something, some things that apply to all booster boxes, okay? The first thing you need to understand when it comes to buying booster boxes is you are more than likely, especially over time, going to lose money on the deal. That is a given, and a lot of people don't understand that. They expect to be able to buy a box and have it be worth what they paid or more. But as long as a set's in print, that's not going to work out logistically. It just, like from a market perspective, if you buy a box, let's say you can buy a box. I tell you, you can buy a booster box for $150 and you're guaranteed to get $400 worth of cards out of it. Let's say I can tell you that's the situation we're living in. Let's say every hour of devastation booster box you buy is going to give you $400 worth of cards. Well, that's not going to last because those cards are only worth something due to demand of people wanting them. The more that people hear, hey, wait a minute, there's $400 worth of cards in these boxes, the more these boxes get opened. So the more the cards in them become available on the market. As a result, fewer are being requested to be sold to people, and that makes people willing to sell them for cheaper and cheaper, especially as online merchants will end up with more and more copies of this card, and they will drop prices. I mean, and they have to drop prices to compete with each other. Somebody can't keep a card at $10 when someone else is selling it at five, right? That's not how the market works. So eventually, as long as the set's in print, you're going to hit a point where it's going to have to basically roughly balance out or you lose money because otherwise boxes are just going to keep being cracked until we reach that point. So that's always been a given, but people don't understand that. I've never had an issue with that. That's just the nature of capitalism and market forces. That makes sense to me. So it's not, um, it's not really a reason by itself to make a video, honestly, but when it comes to talking about these kind of analysis, there's a number of <clears throat> there's a number of different factors to take into account. What I have here is I have um, a mix of packs from two different Hour of Devastation boxes. Uh, I'm not going to be buying any more boxes of this because it's just it's a terrible product. And honestly, I know it's probably weird that I'm putting this. Probably seems weird to you guys that I'm putting this stuff here into a tub of water. But this is just the best way I could think of for one of the ways that I wanted to evaluate this set. So we're just gonna take a random sampling of booster packs from two different uh, two different boxes here. And these have come from uh, like a local gaming store as opposed to being purchased online. So they're from a reputable source. So that's a non-issue there. So a lot of the time when it comes to talking about booster packs, it's really just a matter of, hey, do you wanna buy the booster packs? Are you gonna go through, is it worth it? Do you enjoy the lottery experience? Do you enjoy the opportunity of winning like are you going to score big what are they going to put in there for you uh, are you someone who just likes exploring the set through this is this is one of the i think this is one of the few reasons that i could still recommend buying a booster box of our devastation if that's what you wanted to do they kind of float um basically would be if you're somebody who enjoys exploring the story through the cards you don't look at spoilers or whatever and you want to crack a box and see all the different cards the commons the artwork and everything that's a pretty decent reason i mean the level of misprints and errors that exist specifically within Hour of Devastation could severely impact that experience if you're somebody who really enjoys the aesthetics. So that may be a massive detractor to you. But to me at this point, the to buy a booster box of Hour of Devastation is an insane proposition. And we'll talk about why. Basically, I mean, it's a pretty simple breakdown. You're getting, for anybody who doesn't know, a booster box contains 36, 36 packs of 15 cards and a token or add insert and basically i'm going to be using canadian pricing if you want to know the sources information like that where it was come where it comes from all that will be located in the description for you so we'll be dealing with prices from my localized area because that makes sense you can scale it to whatever the prices are in your area based on the starting price of the booster box it'll give you a rough guide so the price of a booster box of hour of devastation at a reasonably priced establishment in my area is $139. Now that's before any kind of taxes or delivery. So basically, when you break it down uh, to a pack cost, these packs cost $3.85 each. If you buy them in a booster box without accounting for tax, any kind of shipping or anything like that, if you want to factor in tax, it gets closer to about $4.50. 
but we're um, we're gonna round these up to four dollars for the purposes of this video so for the purposes of this video our devastation packs are worth four dollars okay so that's what you need to understand and that's buying them not individually that's not buying packs individually that's a different scenario so these packs are valued at four dollars each now because I'm no longer willing to buy boxes of this instead of cracking boxes myself for this I went and went and watched some videos specifically where uh, boxes were opened and the entire thing was done on camera so that I could document the results of multiple box openings so I have done so um, the source that I used for these was uh, MTG Good Deeds he had two really solidly recorded hour of devastation box openings there may have been more but I was just using two for this exercise I just wanted a sample to give you guys an example and originally I was just going to use one but I felt like the first one I got was a really like it's an off skew sample and so I wanted to give you two because I felt like this one might be a little lower even than normal and I want to give a fair estimation I don't want to seem like I'm biased against the product and that I'm giving it a reasonable chance so we're going to be starting with $139 valuation on the box four dollars a pack and normally what we would do is we would go through a box and we would pull all the cards and we would talk about the value but I want to walk you through a different experience here because you've seen lots of box openings I want to take you through the actual financial gut punches of opening a box without giving you the visual feedback and the other little tricks that wizards have to make the experience more of a flashy gambly casinos type experience you're opening these booster packs and they're all silvery and flashy every pack is new all the cards are fresh and new everything it's like a lottery ticket right so every time you're opening that pack you get that feeling and even when you're watching there's that suspense so while i do have all the card names here instead of telling you the card names what we're going to do is we're going to do a financial blow by blow so what i want you to do is you're going to be mtg good deeds but we're going to pretend like you're you're like brand new to the game you're a little boy all right so we're going to call you we're going to call you good we're going to call you little little goody all right, you're a little goody. All right, now to get into character, if you haven't seen MTG Good Deeds, you're a dude who likes to wear weird, ugly t shirts that like look like you're wearing overalls, and you don't understand that in Hour of Devastation, all the split cards are not double rares, and they basically have the word two in between each card, like spring. It's not spring and mine, it's spring to mind. So now you know how to think like little goody, get in that mind state. You're a little goody, and you got yourself. A box of Hour of Devastation, okay? Cost you $139, four bucks a pack. You broke it down. Now, you start cracking your packs. In the first pack, you open a dollar. So you've just lost $3 in the first pack. Oh, that didn't feel good. What happened in your second pack? You opened 75 cents. Oh, $3.25 down. Ouch. Third pack, what do you open? Five dollars. Oh, you're a dollar up. That feels good. That was a mythic. I don't know if I mentioned it, guys, but in our devastation currently, based on the pricing, uh, there are no um, there are what is it? Sorry, there are no rares worth more than five dollars in the entire set. There are three rares worth five dollars. There are two rares worth four dollars, and that's rounding one up to four dollars to be generous to Champion of Wits because. It was at like three seventy five, and because I'm rounding the packs up to four dollars, I figured it would be fair. We'll do fair on both sides. So bear that in mind, guys. Two four dollar rares, which are break even rares, three five dollar rares, and six out of the twelve mythics in the entire box. Or sorry, not the entire box. In the entire set, six six mythics out of the entire set will hit that threshold for you, and the lowest one is worth five dollars right and that's what you've just hit here in the third pack i'll let you know that was a mythic if you guys want to watch the videos i'll have them linked as well so you can actually watch him crack through these packs this box was extraordinarily bad like this one that's part of the reason i didn't just want to use this as the only example because it's it's amazing in how bad it is but you need to see it's a frank example of what you're in for so that was the third pack five dollars in the fourth pack you open a dollar ouch there's a three dollar hit fifth pack what do you get 75 cents oh little goody god damn man three dollars and 25 cents more your lunch money gone your mom's not going to be happy after that would you crack oh this is one of the better rares in the set you got yourself two dollars 50 percent of your pack value whoa little goody you're doing it now next pack we're on the seventh pack by the way one dollar after that 250 in the next pack jesus are we going to hit something good next oh we got the 50 cent there's two 50 cent rares in the set and we hit one ouch 
Do you guys know what track printing is? Because this box was a hardcore victim of track printing, and I genuinely think that track printing has probably gotten worse, and Wizards is using it in a more nefarious way. And if you don't know what I mean when I'm talking about track printing, then check out my video where I talk about the secret rarities that Wizards use to ensure that your booster boxes don't have too much value in them. They stop you from getting too much value. And it's clearly at work here. It's brutal. They do this intentionally. They have a pretty good idea of what rares are going to be the good money rares and the power rares. And they make sure you will get fewer of them in a booster box while maintaining the regular rare status to give you the illusion that you have an equal chance. The same way that a slot machine will show you something on the screen that's irrelevant to what's actually happened to make you think you were so close and you have an equal chance every time when you don't. So, where were we? We were on, what was it, pack number eight, 250, 50 cents on the ninth, the ninth pack. The tenth pack, you break even with a $4 rare. One of the top five rares in the set. You managed to do it. Ah, good job, little goody. Then you get hit by a 75 cent rare. Then a dollar rare. Then again, you break even at $4. Man, when are we going to hit the good times? 75 cents. Oh, next we got a buck. 50 cents. A dollar 50. 75 cents. Three dollars. A dollar. A dollar. 75 cents. What do we got here? Five dollars. Oh, profit again. What was the last time that we saw five dollars? When was that? Was that all the way back in pack number three? Oh my god. So pack number three and pack number 23 are the first two packs to actually get you ahead by two dollars. Whereas every other pack, a couple of them broken even in every other pack in that has been either a mild to significant loss. After that, pack 24, 75 cents. Pack 25, 75 cents. Two dollars after that. The next pack we have, oh by the way, just so you know, there are packs with foils. These Some of these packs include foils, but every foil was negligible, worthless. I have asterisks here to let me know about which ones had foils. So we've got 75 cents, $2, $4, there's another break even, and that's because we're generous and rounded up, $1, $2, 50 cents, $1, 50 cents, $2.50, $1, 75 cents, $2.50. That's how the booster box went. You can watch the video for yourself. Now, they have included full art lands in the packs. I don't include them in the valuation. They don't matter anymore. They have overprinted full art lands to the point where they no longer have any real value. You can't honestly consider them to have value. It's not reasonable. I mean, you can have, sorry, let me give a little bit of a disclaimer to that. You can consider them worth more than the most basic of basic lands, but that's it now. They're not special. Like they originally only showed up in Unhinged and Unglued. And then they decided to revisit that well in Zendikar, which was a smart move on their point because it had um, it had been a long time since they had had full art lands. Great time to bring them back. Smart move. So when Battle for Zendikar comes back, they bring them back, and I'm like, oh, all right, cool. But then they decided to put them in Amonkhet and Hour of Devastation, but they were like, we'll only make them 25% as common. It doesn't matter with the sheer amount that are being opened and how long they're staying in our consciousness. They no longer feel special. You can even see it when you watch Lil Goody's video. You can even hear it in the second video. One of the two. Sorry, I may get them muddled up. But in one of the two videos, like he keeps talking about the full art lands that he cracks. But at a certain point, he just talks about how they don't really matter and how many he has. That's the feeling you get from it. And that's from somebody who probably hasn't cracked nearly as much stuff. It's, it's real and it's prevalent. And they're bringing the full art lands back in the next unset. And I saw them and I was so disappointed because honestly, I used to get really excited when I saw full art lands. And I looked at them and I felt dead inside because they just seemed like, wow, great. You put a different collar on your poodle. That's what it felt like. Like, look at the green co fucking collar on my poodle. Nobody cares anymore, dipshit. Stop bringing your poodle out. Like, it just, it doesn't work anymore. So you can't count the lands. They don't mean anything. Now, on top of this, this box was insane. When I said he got like, he got track fucked, he got track fucked. He got multiple duplicate rares in this box he got um he ended up getting what was it one two three four five six seven seven different cards where i only asterisk the duplicates so seven cards we already had and every single one was a junk rare you don't see duplicate solemnities you see no ramming up excavators none of that stuff the duplicates are all swarm intelligences and like it's always been like for the longest, they used, they used to use track printing because track printing isn't evil in itself. It's just a way of ensuring that you never get a booster box where you never get zero mythics and situations like that, which would genuinely make people unhappy. So it's a way of maintaining order in boxes and not having true randomness because true randomness is not 
is not what anybody wants. It may be what you think you want, but it's really not. So track printing is not in itself evil, but because they can use it to shift rarities around without letting you know and manipulate the system, basically, because of how greedy wizards is and what they do, it's just out of control. The level of misprints that have surfaced, every type of misprint imaginable has shown up in this set just today, not even joking. I run events, so I see people cracking packs all the time. So I saw people cracking regular packs of hours today, and I saw people cracking the um, showdown packs. And the print quality on both is abysmal. I saw, I saw, I've seen print errors in Hour of Devastation that I've never seen before in my life. And I am an active misprint collector. I've collected misprints my whole life. I have a video where I talk about Wizards card quality. And if you watch it, you'll see I have a stack this big of misprints I collected my whole life. And this is the stack of misprints that have shown up in the last year just because of Wizards garbage printing policy. As a result, misprints no longer feel exciting to me. They're sad garbage. So they have created new types of misprints and they're not even exciting to me. I have seen numerous foils with vertical blind stripe line crossings across them. All kinds of foils. I saw multiples of them today. I saw ones running up and down. Pack fresh. The card quality, the printing quality is so bad. The Even the cards that aren't misprinted and that are printed to the standard they were looking to print at, you can tell. Even just comparing them to M and Pet, the quality is so much worse. It's so much more faded out. Like this set... I cannot recommend it. You shouldn't buy it at all. There are a few more points I'm going to evaluate it on, but good God, like even if you're getting exactly what's promised with no errors, the cards are garbage and they're not worth anything. And even if you were somebody who wanted to buy boxes and save them, there's like two cards in the set that are maybe going to matter later on. Solemnity has a good chance because it has a very unique ability that can be abused in powerful ways. So Solemnity has a really good chance of showing up elsewhere. But you can buy some boxes and hold on to them and go, wow, Solemnity and ramming up Excavator will increase the value of this box over time if there are any even in there. Or you could spend the same $140 and buy Solemnities and I don't know what ramming up's going for right now off the top of my head but i know for a fact that solemnity is only going for four dollars so you could buy over 30 of them for the same price as a box if that was the kind of speculation you want to do singles are the way to go i mean look at this we've got three rares that are five dollars each you want a play set of those that's going to cost you sixty dollars do you want the four dollar rares as well fine you're going to play set of each of those that's another 32 you're only at 92 bucks right now and you already have play sets of the five most important rares from the set. And the rest can be just picked up through random trading, prize pools. Like buying singles is what a smart man does. And buying packs and booster boxes is what a fucking retarded pace drinking moron does. That's what you do when you're a halfwit. All right. Unless, like I said, very specific reasons like you love looking through all the stuff or you like even if you like gambling this isn't gambling anymore you're gonna lose did you hear the numbers like even fucking lottery tickets give you better odds jesus christ how many winning tickets did we get out of this 36 guys like it's it's absurd how many winning tickets did we get we got two five dollar winning tickets that's it that's it out of 36 two five dollar wins off of four dollar scratch tickets guys and every other one's technically a win a win loss if you count 75 cents as a win if you're one of those idiots who would buy a three dollar scratch ticket and consider one dollar a win then yeah that's a win but if you can if you compare this even to lottery tickets and lottery tickets are pissing your money away that's a fool's game and this is worse guys on this box no word of a lie the total value of all the cards 58 dollars and 75 cents and if you want to be nice and throw in like two bucks for the bulk and 10 bucks for some abrades and claims that I may have missed, you still only hit $70. But at the 58.75, that's a loss of $80.25. Like you literally fucking burned 58% of your money and more than that because the cards you end up with are worth $58.75. But are they? Can you use them at the gas station? Can you buy groceries with them? No. 
you have cardboard rectangles with pictures on them that most of them like are 75 cent cards worth 75 cents can you sell them to most people for 75 cents unless they really want them no nope, they're garbage the bulk rares same with the dollar rares same a lot of the times with the dollar 50 rares and almost the two dollar rares depending on where you're from and how it works so most of this is nothing guys 450 cent rares 975 cent rares ten dollar rares one dollar fifty rare three two dollar rares three two dollar fifty cent rares one three dollar rare three four dollar rares two five dollar rares that's a whole booster box that's 140 dollars that's an incredibly disappointing experience for little goody all right now i felt like that was crazy i felt like that was insane so i sat down and i watched another of his video i spent a lot of time thinking about this and working on these these type of videos because i genuinely feel that the community is underserved with this type of analysis and i just i wish there were more people doing this kind of thing because i'm sure there are aspects that i'm not thinking of and if you guys can think of other things that i should be covering let me know by all means because i want to help people i get messages on my other videos talking about how helpful the stuff talking about the deck builders toolkit and stuff i would have ignored before was so we'll try and do everything i'm going i'm going to actually evaluate every set just based on wizards like the print quality we have to see if it's going anywhere can you imagine if iconic masters was as bad as hour of devastation oh my god okay so the second box We'll fly through the numbers real quick. Um, actually, you know what? I don't need to do a pack by pack for you on this one, guys. I'll just give you the blow by ball. I'll let you know there was one pack that was exciting. One pack that was exciting, a $22 pack. The 16th pack had a $22 Mythic. That was uh, that was it. That was the only exciting pack. In terms of value breakdown, we had one $22 rare. We had three $5 rares, two four. I'm saying we, because me and Lil Goody are in this together now. After watching his videos multiple times and getting all this info. Anyways. Me and Lil Goody, what we got was 37 rares out of this. The other one didn't even have a foil rare unless I missed it. Um, so 37 rares. The Mythic was worth 22. Uh, three $5 cards, two $4 cards, two $3 cards, one $2.50 rare, six $2 rares, $1.50 rare, $11 rares, nine rares at 75 cents, and one rare at 50 cents. I mean, this is absurd, guys. And actually, yeah, that, that's something I wanted to mention as well. Due to the track printing hilariousness, fucking Little Goody got fucked so hard that he got three copies of Reason to Believe, man. Three copies of Reason to Believe, which is the card they inserted in one of the Planeswalker decks and intentionally fucking C or D tracked, at least C or D tracked. I wouldn't be surprised if they're running an E track now as well. So they C or D tracked Reason to Believe for sure and then uh and then went ahead and uh, gave little goody little goody three of them oh poor guy so anyways the breakdown on this one financially he didn't get roughed up quite so bad it was pretty much reverse numbers in this case it was 85 dollars and 25 cents in actual value which was a 53 dollar and 75 cent loss 30 39 percent loss so if you had $100, it's like someone came in and took fucking 39 right off the stack. Or 40 if it's easier for your brain to go. 40 out of your 100 bucks is gone, chump. Thanks for being a moron. Oh, and by the way, I transformed the other $60 into Magic Monopoly money. Mm, eat a dick. So, honestly, singles are absolutely the way to go. Leave cracking packs to the people who are able to buy the boxes at wholesale. Because they buy the boxes for much cheaper and then sell them to you in a markup. But they can just crack the, the packs and then they're paying much less to get the singles out there. And we can get them to what's a more reasonable price. And that's what you need to know about the prices on the cards now. They're way more reasonable than pre-release prices. Pre-release prices are hopeful guesses that are made by the people who want to sell you those cards. So they're definitely not accurate indicators of what the market thinks the cards are worth. I've waited a few months and well i mean i can't say i actively intentionally waited a few months the situation arose that i came about doing this at this point and it seems like it's worth to talk about it at this point because a lot of people do do it at pre-release time and not a lot of people paint the picture of what happens a few months later because while this may not be pre-release our devastation will be available so for sale for a considerable amount of time and people will be considering whether to buy these booster boxes i watch people buy boxes all the time and they do not always buy the newest box or what's most valuable and so having more information out there for them to make an informed decision is very useful so now let us move on all right so these booster packs have been nicely basting for about an hour now let's uh let us take a look and see if any water has seeped into them i thought about the best way to test whether these things were airtight 
and water seemed like the best way to do it honestly and for anybody who's wondering why you would do something like that and why it being airtight would matter in terms of cards coming curled due to humidity or anything like that it's definitely going to be an issue so you want the cards to be as protected as possible god even the printing on the packages is so bad are they all like this good lord they should be ashamed of themselves this one's particularly bad Oh, misprints even on the booster wrappings. Okay, so let's crack into these. I don't really care if they get wet because the cards in this set are abysmally printed most of the time anyway. So what am I going to do? Ruin a garbage card? Who cares? Okay, so, well, you know what? There you go. Look at that. Okay. Oh, it looks like, yeah, looks like nothing got in. Let's, let's check a couple more packs. All right, there you go. All right, well let's just let's just see if anything are any of them sinking. Any of them? They're all just flowing. Yeah, I'll do one more, one more just to see. But I think it's pretty safe to say it looks like uh, in terms of not having any kind of holes anywhere and actually keeping the cards sealed. Yeah. All right. Okay. So. I feel comfortable saying that that is totally a pass. So, they have done well in that regard. I totally picked through his six packs randomly from two different booster boxes, put them in there, tried that out, and they all passed that test, so that's excellent. Okay, so, the other thing that I had heard, actually, you know what, one more thing, I wanted to actually just quickly take a look at the corners and the edges to see, oh, there we go, this is what I'm talking about. There are other things. Now, this pack, right here I don't know my camera's not that great but right up on the edge here is actually open so uh, an issues of being able to like pry open a pack and reseal it without actually having shown any kind of like basically pack tampering is an issue that you can deal with and I've heard about people getting fake repacks and when you have issues like this this is exactly something I was looking for so that's that is going to be at least a somewhat fail Oh, there's another one. Wow. Okay. Three. Wow. Are they all like this? Oh, wow. There's entry into every single one of these. Every single. No wonder. Wow. Man, maybe I should save these and see if I can do some kind of like fake repack thing myself where I turn these. I want to see if that's feasible. I'm going to have to save some of these. Okay. So that's a fail. These packs totally seem like they would be openable and resealable. Apparently, I don't know if it's just that I, well, you know what, screw it. Let's take one of these ones that has a, uh, let's take one of these and give it a good old dip, all right? This one I see has a hole in it. So we'll see if that actually still maintains the airtight seal or if it actually gets into the cards. That should be enough. Yeah, all right, there we go. Let's see if that actually impacts the actual seal and if I just gave it an okay grade by randomly grabbing three packs that would be acceptable oh you know what okay no nope, definitely okay so it does maintain it do oh wait 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 a minute hold on now oh wait I was wrong I was very wrong oh solemnity you took one for the team buddy <laughs> oh solemnity oh well now well now I take it all back well, I'm glad I took that extra step. All right, so it fails the it fails the watertight test. Multiple packs in the box are like that. I just somehow managed to snag. Oh, nope, wrong again. Some of these ones that were actually in here as well. Let's, let's go a little further and see. Oh, okay, weird. All right, so if it's open down there, it may or may not be that deep to get in. The, basically... If you can, oh, if you can see a little opening in the end, it doesn't guarantee that it's messed up the seal. But I can see why cards are coming curled and have humidity issues and stuff. So we're gonna have to give them a fail on that count for sure. All right. Well, the only other thing I wanted to check on, really, in terms of this set, and maybe they'll get one pass because everything's a fail so far. Apparently, tons of misprints. I didn't even need to document the misprints because they're everywhere, everywhere for this set. So the only other thing that I wanted to check out is I had heard recently that uh, scummy people like to weigh packs to try and find foils and wizards 
had figured out an effective countermeasure to this. So I figured we'll just take a random sampling of some packs. And any law enforcement officers who are watching, this is a brand new scale purchased for this and this alone. It has never been used for any illegal purposes. All right, how many packs do we got here? Boom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 sounds good. Let's try 10. Let's see what kind of a variance we get in weight and see if that's a way to figure out if there are foils in these packs or if Wizards has... Okay, so 28.85. 28.85. So those two are in the exact same category. All right, we've got 29.5. Okay, so there's a... There's a point one difference between those. All right. And then we have 28.85. So you go in that pile. And we have 28.75. Okay. So you go down here. Boom. And then we've got 28.90. Okay. So boom. We've got 0.9. All right. So you, we'll put you in there. 0.5 increment. All right, and you're down on the 75 scale. What are you? You are on the 0.8. So, wow, okay. So there is a decent bit of variance, but can we crack the weightiest packs and still get the foils is the question. Because they're supposedly supposed to have changed the weight of the cardboard inserts to give enough variance to the packs that you can't tell. Okay, so we have them sorted out into these categories here. And I'm just going to start at this end with the heaviest pack, and we'll see if there's a foil in it. All right, so there is a foil in it. All right, so that is definitely one strike against, but that could also just be random. That doesn't mean anything yet. In the second heaviest pack, okay, no foil. All right, and there was only, what, 0 0.05 of a gram difference between the packs. So that could easily be accounted for by difference in weight oh there's another foil oh the heavier packs okay so in the three heaviest packs of the ones we weighed we found two foils so far that looks like a fail but let's see how many foils we find in the rest of the packs just to see how many there are throughout here i mean we've got no foil in there and we've got a foil in there okay so the middle stack had one foil all right so I mean that's 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 not too bad so far actually. All right, and there's you know what there's two foils in the middle stack. Okay, so the middle stack actually is equaling up in terms of how many foils showed up there. The foil swamp. Oh god, it's got those stupid vertical foil lines. Why did I even look? Why am I torturing myself? Jesus. Okay, so in these last couple of packs for the test, let's see. Nimble obstructionist. All right, and oh, there's a foil there too. Well done. Okay, you know what? This makes it totally like the, the way these foils are spread out. Jesus, also, the sheer number of foils I'm cracking is incredibly convenient for this. All right, no foil in that pack. And in the lightest pile, we have no foil. Okay, so we found no foil, one foil, two foils, two foils, one foil. Okay, well, I mean, if we even remove the group with no foils, that seems like a pretty even spread across. So I think that they've done a pretty good job in changing the weight of the token insert card enough to account for that. So I'll give them uh, a passing grade on that. So that's the only thing they pass on. This is still totally a do not buy this garbage, garbage product. It is just, mi it's miserable, the production value they're putting into the cards now. And, I mean, this does not bode well for Iconic Masters, guys. So I know I went over long on this one, probably. It's uh, my first booster pack analysis, and there was a lot I wanted to talk about trying out this format. We will see what kind of tweaks I make in the end. So, I wanted to give a shout-out to Lil Goody for recording those videos and running a Don't Magic channel. Go check him out. I've got links to both of the videos that I used to determine the valuations of those boxes that he got. And uh, on top of that, I just like what he's doing over there. I like his channel. I don't like his one t-shirt, but I definitely like his channel. So, go check him out. Thanks for coming by. If you like, if you like what I'm doing here, uh, consider helping me out either on Patreon or 